Thank you, Mayor Jane Castor here. Uh, we are going to give you the latest update, latest information that we have on Hurricane Idalia. And as uh, many of you have seen, the cone has shifted somewhat, which in our favor in the Tampa Bay area. But as we also know from uh, history, has taught us that that's not always reliable. We've seen with Charlie and Ian and many others uh, that went outside of those cones of predictability. So what I want to let everyone know today, uh, two issues that are critically important. One is the wind. We are going to have hurricane force winds. Um, they may not be sustained, but we, we should feel hurricane force winds from Adelia. And that will be later this evening, later tonight, into uh, early Wednesday morning hours. Secondly, and this is something that we don't always experience, is the tidal surge. Tomorrow, Wednesday morning, uh, we should see the tidal surge coming in. And so we don't want anyone to wake up, see the blue skies and think that uh, we are done with Adelia. That is not the case. And that probably will be the most critical element tomorrow, will be that storm surge, especially if it comes in with that king tide, that higher tide uh, caused by the full moon. And so we want everyone to be very, very cognizant of that and ensure that you remain aware of the updates uh, as the hurricane comes through. As you know, we prepare for these events every year. We have every City of Tampa employee on deck. We are out uh, from our call centers answering everyone's calls. We have closed down the sandbag uh, locations as of 1130 today, but we passed out over 30,000 sandbags to our community uh, over the past few days. We have our push crews out. After the storm, they'll get out with drones to assess any of the damage that we have. And we, again, will keep our community informed to let you know when you can go back into those areas. Evacuation uh, has been called for uh, Zone A, and so we would encourage everyone to get out of those areas. Now, you don't have to go far. What we say is you uh, hide from the wind and run from the water. So if you can just go in 10, 20 miles inland where the water won't be an issue, that's what we are advising to all of our residents and do it now as well. We're going to have a TICO representative come up and talk about the specific details of TICO, but I can tell you that we have literally thousands of utility workers that are already staging in our state. And if we are impacted, they'll be here to get the electricity turned back on as quickly as we possibly can. So we are doing everything that, that we can to keep our community safe. Our first responders will be out. Police officers are going out through Zone A, uh, letting everyone know that they need to evacuate, especially if they're in mobile homes, uh, lower lying areas right on the water, encouraging them to uh, get out of those areas. As everyone knows, we work hand in hand with the county, with the state, and with the federal agencies. I've personally been in touch with uh, offices from the federal level on down. We work hand in hand with Hillsborough County on the shelters. Uh, we have those shelters are up and running. Heart is working with us to provide rides to those shelters for anyone who needs them. Uh, we have ensured that the generators at the ALFs are working in our community and also letting them know anything we can do uh, to assist them that we will be there when, uh, when necessary. But we also need our residents and our visitors to understand your level of responsibility. Now, I don't know about everybody out there, but we haven't been hit in a century, so I wasn't around when that last hurricane had a direct hit. But I have been here uh, for 63 years, and I've seen the force of nature. I've gone to other areas that have been directly hit by a hurricane. And the one consistent response from everyone who made the decision to stay is that I will never do that again. So 
understand that Mother Nature wins every time. So if you have the opportunity to evacuate and you can, you should, please, please do. So we have a great team here. Our, our uh, police officers will be out there. We do have high rescue vehicles, but there's gonna be a point where we can't come get you uh, when you call. So make those decisions now, prepare yourself, and understand that your city is prepared and we're here to ensure that we get through this storm safely. Now I wanna bring up our uh, Hispanic advisory, Maribel Garrison, to provide response. Thank you, Mayor Castro, buenos días. Eh, le estamos dando una actualización del estado de emergencia sobre la tormenta Idalia. En este momento, todo parece indicar que estamos fuera del coro, el cono de incertidumbre, pero es importante que continuemos con las planificaciones. Eh, es importante que si es necesario evacuar, si están en una zona A, que por favor lo hagan lo antes posible para evitar cualquier tipo de emergencia. Eh, no es necesario que vayan a, a los albergues, pero sí es necesario que tomen las debidas precauciones. Eh, los centros de distribución de arena a este momento ya han cerrado, así que no hay más arena disponible. Los albergues que tenemos disponibles a este momento, eh, toda esta información está disponible a través de nuestra página. Es una coordinación que tenemos con el condado de Hillsboro, eh, pero quiero mencionar que Middleton es un albergue que acepta animales y que Erwin Tech es el albergue que tenemos eh, disponible para necesidades especiales. Eh, la flota de nuestros automóviles está lista para proveer servicios ya luego de que la tormenta pase. Eh, es importante recalcar que el, el, la situación con esta tormenta no va a ser necesariamente la lluvia o el agua sino, y los vientos, sino la marejada que va a surgir luego de que pase la tormenta. Volvemos, el hecho de que estemos fuera de la zona de, del cono de incertidumbre no significa que no vamos a ver eh, ningún tipo de repercusión eh, con relación a eh, el agua que vamos a ver luego de la tormenta y esto se espera que sea mañana uh, en la mañana eh, y en la te tarde temprana. Eh, luego de la tormenta vamos a tener drones disponibles que van a eh, verificar el daño que pueda haber sido causado durante la tormenta, así que esto va a ayudar a poder eh, enviar ayuda donde sea necesario. Eh, y lo más importante es, volvemos a planificar para cualquier tipo de emergencia, eh, luego de que los vientos lleguen a más de 45 millas por hora, los rescatistas, de los, eh, la policía y los bomberos no pueden salir, eh, por eso de tener el servicio, eh, la seguridad de los empleados, así que por favor, manténganse eh, con un plan de acción activo, si es necesario que salgan de sus hogares, Háganlo lo más pronto posible, no esperen a última hora porque esto entonces es lo que podría causar eh, dificultades para ustedes como residentes. Uh, I would like to now turn it over to Chief Tripp. Hi, as the mayor has stated, if you are planning on evacuating, the time is now. The order was given and we need everyone to follow authorities. Once the storm begins, traveling on the roads is definitely going to be dangerous. We have shelters in place, and we would like for anyone that's in the evacuation area to take advantage of going to those shelters. If you need assistance, information has been given out as well as on our website to assist you to get to those shelters. If you choose to stay home, be sure to charge your electronics, have enough food and water and medication for the next 72 hours. Don't forget your neighbors as well as your pet. But once again, if you've been ordered to evacuate, please follow the instructions. The fire department will continue to monitor wind speeds in regards to responding to calls. We are out there to assist the community. But just remember, when the winds get a certain sustained speed, we will not be able to come out and assist you. So once again, please follow authorities' guidelines and evacuate. As the mayor stated, one of the biggest concerns we're gonna have is the water surge after. Do not think it's going to be a good day tomorrow. Make sure you take heed to the uh, water that will be developing and causing additional flooding. Please follow authorities and listen to um, the latest update with the news. When a storm passes through on Wednesday, the fire department will be out to assist if anyone needs assistance. If you are 
um, if you are going to use a generator, make sure that you follow the instructions on the generator. Do not use the generator inside the home due to carbon monoxide. Make sure that it is outside. Once again, we are here to assist you, but we need you to take a line of responsibility and follow authorities' guidelines. With that, I'll turn it over to Chief Burkhall. Thank you, Chief Tripp. Tampa police officers train constantly and are prepared for any situation. We've seen the devastation of those storms that are caused down south, personally, with our officers heading down there. We're taking all necessary steps to ensure the safety of our community and to make sure everyone is ready for whatever comes our way. We are on Alpha Bravo shift, which means basically that our entire department has been activated. We have officers assisting with evacuation orders, helping with sandbags, working at shelters, and still patrolling our city and keeping it safe. In addition to that, I've spoken to the sheriff and police chiefs from around, and they're all ready and willing to help us, as we are to them. As the path changes, it does not mean that you should not remain vigilant. We expect to have wind and storm surges in our area. Now is the time to review precautions you have prepared for for both before, during, and after the hurricane, such as stocking up on supplies, securing your homes, and following any evacuation or emergency orders. Stay informed, follow us on social media, sign up for our Alert Tampa, and listen to the local news outlets for updates on the storm's progress. The Tampa Police Department will continue to monitor the progress, and we will provide updates as needed. For more information on our hurricane safety and preparedness, visit tampa.gov forward slash hurricane or call our helpline at 833-TPA-INFO for additional information related to the storm. And next I will have the TICO Director of Communications. Hello, everyone. It is still too early to predict how many outages that we're gonna see from this storm. Rest assured, we've prepared year round for severe weather and we're ready for multiple scenarios. We have made great strides in hardening our grid to prevent outages, but strong winds and floodwaters can impact overhead and underground power lines. We are staging approximately 3,000 workers plus equipment at strategic locations to respond as quickly as possible after the storm passes, and that includes line workers, tree trimmers, and damage assessors. These men and women have traveled as far north as Maine and as far west as Texas to come help us and we're very grateful for their help. Our crews will work around the clock after the storm passes to restore your power. In terms of safety, a few items. Do not operate portable generators during the storm. Portable generators should be used outdoors only. Running an uncovered generator in the rain poses a threat of electrocution. Stay out of floodwaters. They can hide energized power lines and other hazards. And then remember to avoid downed power lines and stay as far away as possible. Do not touch anything that power lines are touching. Call Tampa Electric at 888-223-0800 to let us know and also avoid any down damaged solar panels, their wiring, and their components. They can have the same effect. You can leave natural gas on during a storm or an evacuation. You may choose to turn off gas to individual appliances, but the valve at the main meter can only be turned off by a qualified people, people's gas representative or emergency personnel. We have additional energy-related safety tips and storm resources and information on how to report your outage on Tampa Electric Storm Center at tampaelectric.com storm. We will also be keeping our social, social channels updated, so check them regularly during the storm. Thank you. All right, before we open it up for questions, I just want to go back over a few very, very important points. Understand that the city of Tampa the Hillsborough County and the Tampa Bay region are all prepared to face whatever uh, Idalia brings our way. And what we are asking is for our community to do all you can 
to prepare and to keep yourself and your family safe. So do those things now. We all uh, take for granted electricity. When that goes out, you're not going to be able to charge your phones. Uh, your air conditioning isn't going to work. Those types of things. Make sure you're charging your phones. You know where the flashlights are at. All of those simple things that you may take for granted, do that now. Have a reunification uh, plan for you and your family. If you have the ability to leave once again, to hide from the wind, run from the water, do that now. If you are in uh, one of those flood prone locations, make that decision and do it now before it's too late. Also, uh, ensure that you are getting real time information. You can get it at tampa.gov backslash hurricane. But again, if the electricity goes out and you haven't charged your computer, look on your cell phones, hopefully those are charged. Uh, you can text for easier alerts on your cell phone, alert Tampa to 888-777 and Tampa Lista to 888-777 for um, messages and updates in Spanish. So please remain up to date on the, the path of this hurricane and please don't take anything for granted. We have worked with all of the agencies in our community, governmental, uh, with the port, with the airport, clearly with TICO, with the hospitals. So we are communicating on a regular basis to do all that we can to keep our community safe. So we will open it up to questions. Yes. Mayor, uh, the governor yesterday said you don't have to go far to get mm -hmm. away. You just said today, you know, you don't have to go really far. How important will the shelters play in Hillsborough and Polk counties as far as keeping people safe in this storm? The shelters always play a, a very large part. Uh, the issue isn't the availability of shelter space. It's having our residents take advantage of that availability. And so that's what they're, we're asking them to do now. Just had a conversation uh, with uh, Tico last night with Archie Collins uh, last night and this morning about the heat as well. You know, we've, we've had record temperatures here in our community. So if that's a possibility that your electricity goes out because of rising surge water, go to a shelter now or go to a location that could even be 10, 20 miles from where you're at now and you don't have to worry about the heat when the electricity, if the electricity goes out. Mayor, we know that there are places in the city, especially South Tampa, that are very susceptible to flooding. Um, what work has been done to make sure that these areas that see flooding a lot can at least see a minimal impact? Well, we have done what we can there. As I said, we prepare uh, year round through exercises and then the closer we get to storm season, we take um, those physical steps to make sure we've emptied out uh, storm water ponds, drainage ponds, as much as we possibly could, especially in those flood prone areas. So a lot of this rainwater, stormwater will have a place to go rather than flooding. We have check what we call the hot spots uh, for drainage to make sure that those are all clear. But also understand that if this surge hits us during a king tide, that means that that storm water is not going to have anywhere to go out in the bay. So it's going to stay where it is at. Uh, we were advised yesterday on our 530 call that there could be as much as four feet of water on Bayshore Boulevard uh, for in excess of hours. Uh, so those are the things that, that we all need to be cognizant of. Stated again, it's been a century since we've taken a direct hit and we all become a bit complacent in that. So this, this is the time to heed these warnings and make sure you're out of the way of that storm surge. And this may be a question for Chief Burkhall, but last year during Ian, we saw people uh, <laughs> On Bayshore, you know, the water was sucked out and all. Is there any plans in place to maybe have law enforcement there keeping people safe? Or is it a, at your own risk, go out and, and you know, see what? Happening. Right. We try to discourage everyone from from going out there if the water is pulled from the bay. And there's a high likelihood that is going to happen again with this storm is that 
the the water will be pulled out before it, it comes back in uh, with a great deal of force. So please, please, please don't go down on Bayshore if the water is pulled out to, to take photos. Uh, you put yourself and others at risk, and especially think about the police officers that are out there working hard and all of the issues that they have to address right now, they shouldn't have to, to address individuals walking out on the, the empty bay. Yeah, it's still 45 miles an hour? 50. 50. 50 sustained winds, uh, we won't go out. But also, again, none of our, uh, we would ask that our residents don't factor that into any decisions that they make because the officers are going to be busy uh, with a number of different tasks and they don't know how long it would take to get to someone or even if they could. And we have all seen those news stories where individuals and families lost their lives because they waited too long and um, were killed by the, the surge, water surges. And based on the forecast, it's not a matter of if it's gonna hit that threshold, it will hit that threshold. It will right now, again, things change. We looked at, we were in the crosshairs of both Charlie and Ian, and they made a last minute turn. So all of the forecasters are very confident in the path that this storm is taking now, and they have factored in uh, the higher temperatures in the Gulf. So all of that has been factored into this storm, and they're confident on that trajectory, but history tells us that uh, it's up to Mother Nature where that storm's going to go. I've been, I've been through some stores and I've seen people with eight, ten cases of water for one person. Right. I mean, it's hard not to. Right. It's to say something to people that are doing that. Yes. You don't know people's individual situations, but it's icy, it's icy water down. Mm hmm What are your thoughts? Well, that's, you know, that's an issue as well is, is taking more than what you need. So just be cognizant of that. Tampa, uh, the beauty of our city, the strength, the success of our city is based on our community coming together uh, to address issues, um, to share in our success. So I would just encourage everyone not only to make sure that you have the supplies on hand that you need, but that you're also uh, looking out for your neighbors. If there's anyone elderly in your neighborhood or just your neighbors, making sure they have what, what um, they need is critically important as well. All right. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it.